where the Bears have fired offensive coordinator Luke Getze and most of his offensive staff. Quarterbacks coach Andrew Ginoco is also out. I just received a text that the running backs, the wide coach, the wide receivers coach, and a bunch of other assistants also have been let go. So a house cleaning on one side of the football, Ian, but the implication of that is also clearly Matt Eberflus stays and gets the opportunity to guide this thing in Chicago into 2024. That's right. The Bears have been having extensive, intense meetings over the last several days centered around, my understanding is, mostly staff changes. It did seem like Matt Eberflus' status really has been fine, I honestly, for some time since we first discussed it a couple weeks ago. It hadn't been quite fine, but we discussed likely back and now obviously going to be back considering he made the change this morning, Luke Getze out as offensive coordinator. You know, this is a fascinating one, guys, if only because, you know, there were times when Justin Fields seemed to struggle, but by the end of the season, he was really rolling. It did seem like there were pockets of time where Luke Getze found exactly what was needed to unlock Justin Fields. Had a couple stretches of games last year, had a stretch of games this year toward the end where he looked like exactly the kind of quarterback that the Bears would want to build their franchise around. Obviously, the last game, did not look as good with so much on the line, being able to put the rivals out of the playoffs. I would say that probably contributed to this. But Luke Getze and his staff out, and maybe the biggest hire that Matt Eberflus has had to make will be coming on the offensive side of the ball. Also going to hire a defensive coordinator, too. The other thing I would say is Getze's pretty respected around the league. I do not expect him to be out of work very long. I give the Bears credit for this much. They've got a defensive head coach with a quarterback that can do a lot of things and, and you know, he's, he's got the chance to be really good, I think. Uh, they also have the number one overall pick in the draft, which they could use on a quarterback. This is a spot where a lot of teams would go, blow it all up, get me the best offensive head coach that you can find. The Bears are looking at this and saying, we've got a head coach who got our team playing really well as a whole down the stretch, particularly on the defensive side of the ball, Let's stay the course here and make the changes on his staff, which is what was being discussed the last couple of days when they ultimately decided whether or not to bring Eberflus back. And let's stay the course and we make those changes and we'll see what they do with the quarterback position itself. But to stick with Matt Eberflus, who uh, got this team rolling and playing some really good football down the stretch, credit to the Bears, Judy, because I see a lot of owners would have an itchy finger in this case. Well, the Bears have had this pattern before. Um, they kept John Fox, and then they drafted uh, Mitch Trubisky, and then they fired John Fox, and then they had Matt Nagy, and then they drafted Justin Fields, and then they fired Matt Nagy, and now we have Eberflus. I don't know if the pattern continues with the draft, or do they keep Justin Fields? But it is sort of these half measures. Um, and, and look, Eberflus did a really good job, uh, especially getting the defense much better when he became the defensive play caller during the season. Um, the Bears have always liked to have a coach be um, more sort of a CEO style head coach, not so much the in the weeds play caller. But obviously, he did a good job with the defense when he took it over. To me, the, 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 here is the situation. If they keep Justin Fields, he is now on his third system in four years, which is not great no matter who you are as the quarterback. And um, if they don't keep Justin Fields and they draft a new quarterback, you have a, a coach going into a very critical third year of his tenure as the head coach with a rookie quarterback and now an entirely new system. And so if the results don't improve dramatically, you know, then do you blow it up again and get rid of Matt Eberflus and the entire coaching staff and then you're starting over all over again. So, I mean, the timing, um, you know, doesn't line up that great. I, I think Matt Eberflus deserves to keep his job, but I do wonder if they have given him some assurances that this is not a, you know, we'll see what happens after next year kind of situation, because otherwise um, they're going to repeat the pattern that they've had previous two coaches. And just to reinforce what Ian said, too, it's not like it was all bad for the Bears offense. They still finished second in rushing this season, despite the fact that Justin Fields Missed a chunk of games. They were playing wow. with a Division II undrafted quarterback, Tyson Bajan, and winning some of those games. They were in the top ten most of the season in third downs and red zone and other key categories. But we see this often. You have to make some type of a change when you're not quite meeting expectations. In this case, it is Luke Getze and the offensive staff that is out and certainly would anticipate with a bunch of OC openings around the league, whether they are 
current openings, openings that could happen, or on new head coaching staffs. Once some of those hires are made, Luke Getzey will be very much in the mix. Judy, you also mentioned the draft. Where the Bears? Well, they're in a pretty good position atop that board. They own the number one overall pick by virtue of trading last year's number one Man. pick, the Carolina, the Bryce Young deal that brought DJ Moore to Chicago. They also own the ninth overall pick thanks to their 7-10 and 10 record, which, Mike, all is going to put extreme focus in the months ahead here. Are they looking for a new offensive coordinator to work with Justin Fields? Are they potentially looking for a new offensive coordinator to build around a guy who's not on the roster just yet? You're asking me? I don't know. I'll let you know yeah. by April, I guess. I'll let you know at that point. Um, I, I Listen, I think Justin Fields has shown the ability to win with his arm, to read defenses a lot better than some folks gave him credit for coming into this league. So he's shown the flashes. So, I, I, I listen, that's what these conversations were about the last couple of days. Okay, Matt Eberflus, what's your plan for Justin Fields? Should we make the move at the quarterback position? Do you think we should draft a quarterback? Who is your idea to come in as the new offensive coordinator if we let Luke Getze go? And that's how we got to this point. I don't know particularly what the answers wound up being. I, I just know that I watched Justin Fields this year. You can tell who can cut it. You can tell who can't cut it. I, I talk to people around the league. They say that there is a quarterback there that can be worked with, that can be made to be a guy that you can win with in this league. It's a tough call for the Bears. I don't know which way they're going to wind up going here, but uh, they certainly have the ammo to do whatever they want either way on this one for sure.